Hey everyone, this is Yami, your Latina Next Door. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we have our first installment of our DIY plywood hardwood floors. So we're here at Home Depot to look at some plywood and we're gonna show you what type of plywood we recommend you should use if you decide to use plywood as your flooring instead of hardwood flooring. When you come in your big box stores, there's different grades of plywood. And we're gonna show you at the end the one we chose, but I'm just showing you an example of why we didn't choose the lower end. So obviously the thickness and the look of plywood made a difference. We wanted to choose one that was economical, affordable, a little bit more expensive than the lower end grade so we can get the look that we wanted of a hardwood plank floor. So this is what a lower grade version of plywood. And you can see the cost. I mean, this may vary depending on the location of where you're at in the country. When you're selecting plywood, make sure you are selecting plywood, not sheathing. As you can see, this is what sheathing cell floor looks like. And we're gonna make it easy for you. We're gonna put a link in the description box below to the plywood we selected. That way you can see the ones we picked out versus just randomly picking plywood out. So this is the style of plywood we chose. Radiator pine, or it's also called cabinet plywood. So this is also a version of when, people, when you're building cabinets, higher end cabinets, this is the style of plywood that's usually used. And as you can see, it is not as yellow and it is smooth. It is pre-sanded already. Even though after we rip it, you still want to do a light sanding, but there is no burrs on it. So you can run your hand on it, smooth, and after you rip it, you, know, you just do a light sanding for that. So after we purchased the plywood sheets, we wanted to rip them down to look like hardwood planks. And the reason we did this was because we wanted them to look as close to hardwood floors as possible. The Latino engineer and I both like the look of wide planks. So we decided to go with eight inch planks for our floors. Now due to the width of the plywood sheets, we realized that we had to rip them just under eight inches so that we can get six full boards out of one sheet of plywood. If you prefer thinner planks, you can totally do so. But another reason we chose the wider ones was because it actually covers more when you put them down. So it's not as tedious when you're installing it. Now, as you can see here, we have the plywood on top of a table and that purple thing that you see underneath the plywood is actually a thick piece of foam. And what that does is it allows him to cut the plywood completely to the bottom but not damage the table underneath. So we do recommend getting one of those thick sheets of foam. That way you can protect any surfaces that you are cutting on top of. As you can see, we are using a circular saw in order to rip these planks. Now we have seen other videos that use a table saw in order to cut these down. However, we found that this was a much quicker and easier solution for us and not everyone owns or needs to have a table saw. So this is actually a much more inexpensive option. And the best thing about this is, is that little Craig tool rip cut attachment that you see that we're using creates straight edges or straight lines every single time he goes down that plywood. So each of the planks were exactly the same. And don't worry, we'll be linking everything we mentioned in this video in our description box below for your convenience. Now we did our entire first floor of our house, which is almost 1200 square feet. So we ordered quite a bit of plywood. Now, as you're cutting these down and just make sure to keep them stored away from the elements, that way the plywood is not warped or damaged in any way. Now, after you've cut all of the planks you need, it's time to install. All right, floor time. So we cut everything out, and what we're going to install first is this roofing felt paper. So this kind of has a dual function. 
It has the obviously the water membrane that you would normally put on the roof, but it also instead of wood on top of wood, it kind of will help with the creaking. So you don't have to do this, but since we want to do it right, and then in the instance of maybe if we get pets or you spill something, this will help the subfloor that way you don't have all that nasty floor cream. So the Latino engineer and my dad began rolling it out on the floor. Then in order to attach the roofing paper, he used a hand stapler. While moving down the paper, he used that large level in order to keep the paper flat. As you can see, there's a couple of ridges and he would just smooth out the paper as he would staple. That way it would lay down flat. And no, the Latino engineer shoes are not too big. He just refuses to tie his tennis shoes. And if you are new here and don't know why our subfloors are white, it's because we had to paint them and seal them because of the damage that was left from the previous owners. I'll go ahead and link to that video as well. That way you guys can check it out if you have any kind of water damage on your subfloors. Um, we do have a video on how you can seal them and repair them without having to replace them entirely. Now, one cool thing about the roofing paper is that it has these lines that you can see on the top of it that act as a guide so you know exactly where to place the new one and help you keep laying down the sheets straight. And here's a close-up of what I mean. This is how they keep you on track. And as the Latino engineer said, this is definitely optional. However, since we have been through so much with our floors, we thought an extra layer of protection would not hurt. Now, before installing your plywood planks, you need to check all of your door casings because this plywood is actually very thick. And if your flooring before was thinner than this, then you're gonna have to cut this part of your door casings so that the plywood floors fit just underneath them. And the tool to get this done is an oscillating multi-tool. It looks small, but oh my goodness, this thing is so loud. Now it's not the tool that's loud, it's just the sound that makes while it's cutting the bottom of these casings. But as you can see, this tool makes the process really easy. And as you can see, it's a perfect fit. Now this is where we applied our first plank. We decided not to square the room and start at the center. We wanted to go ahead and start here and work our way back to the front door and that was just a personal preference. This made it a lot easier for us. But in case you're wondering. And one surprising thing, you know this house was built 30 years ago and it's actually really square. So when, we, when I squared it out, we were only off like an eighth of an inch. So I was pleasantly surprised. So I guess, you know, craftsmanship 30 years ago, you know, they did a great job. But the way I wanted to do it, I wanted to do, you know, the, the edges on either side, because normally you start from the middle of the room, once you find your, your square line, you chalk it, you start from the middle and work out. But the Latina next door was like, you know what, why don't we do the whole run down the middle of the hall? So that wasn't my idea, that was her idea. So she, she was the one that recommended do the little edge on the threshold when you walk in, that way nobody ever sees that anyway. So props to her, you know, the LE, does all the hard work and the brains behind the operation is the Latina next door. Our home renovation is a complete family affair. Now when staggering them, we didn't follow a particular pattern or anything because we did want it to look pretty rustic. However, we did try to keep the staggering in full foot increments, like two feet or three feet staggering so that we can at least create a similar pattern throughout the entire room. That way we know, oh, well that was a two foot stagger or this was a three foot. And we use a pneumatic nail gun for this. Now, Unlike pre-manufactured wood planks where you have grooves or they have a 
lock in place clicking system, these planks are cut straight. So you're gonna have few gaps here or there. The key is to get them as close together as you possibly can. So what I'm doing is I'm using this lean mean bike machine to push the boards on. Because normally what you want to do is you want to lay out the flooring before you tack everything up. And I'm just kicking it, pushing it to where I want it, and just stapling it. Demonstration, por favor. All 235 pounds of lean mean bite machine. And I'm doing the edges first, that way I can line everything up. Now you can totally get on your hands and knees and hold the board with one hand while using the nail gun with the other. It's totally up to you. However, the Latino engineer found that this method for him worked the fastest and the best for his knees. Again, so I'm just nailing everything randomly. So whenever I'm putting pressure on using my weight and then going in and just nailing it, I'm not lining it up with everything else down the room. Cause we just wanted to we want it to look rustic and another quick tip for people that when they're using nail guns, you know, I'm not sure depending on your experience level, but you always get a scrap board of the material you're nailing into. That way you can adjust the PSI level on your nail gun and most nail guns have a depth gauge as well. So anytime I'm using the nail gun, I get a scrap piece of wood and just start nailing into it to the depth I would like. You know, obviously you can see the ones that aren't set all the way. So just a good little bit of advice. So if you're nailing stuff in, just get a scrap piece of material and just nail into it. That way you can decide how deep you want to go into it. And like anything else, if this is going to be your first time doing something like this, it's going to take a little bit of getting used to in the beginning, but then you will find your groove. And as you can see here, he would pre-cut and stagger a small section and have it nice and dry fitted before nailing them to the ground. This actually sped up the process for him and it was easier on his back since he would take small breaks to cut the wood, fit them in, and then he would do a nice run of nailing. And we weren't kidding when we said we did the entire first floor. As you can see, this is down the hall and you can see the little transition here to the laundry room. And he did the exact same thing in all of the bedrooms. Now, one thing to note, if you do plan on doing this and going into several bedrooms, is that he would install the first full size plank up against the wall that was closest to the door and work his way out. Then he would come back and add the piece that fit between the hallway piece and the bedroom first plank. And that would be the transition piece that would sit within the door jam. And that is it for this installment. In the next installment of the series, we are gonna share how to stain and seal these floors. There is a ton of information coming your way and a lot of things we learned along the process. I hope you found this video informative and if you did, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget that after the series is done, we are going to be answering all of your questions about this entire process in a live video. So make sure you include all of your questions in the comments below. We thought it would be a great idea to have all questions answered in one video. That way you guys had one place to reference to to get those additional questions answered. Let me know what you think so far and I will see you in the next video. Until then. Adiós.